Under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Immigrant workers are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Immigrant workers are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Immigrant workers are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Immig
we do? Women workers are under attack. What do we do? This is the International Working Women's Day Coalition, and we are here today to stand up for women's rights. We are here along with World Women um, Organizing to Resist and Defend. We are all here, women of color, LGBT women workers that are here today to commemorate March 25th, 1911 victims of the Triangle Turbine Fire Factory. And we are also here today to commemorate International Working Women's Day. Let's hear it for our coalition.
a new grassroots feminist organization that helps build the struggle for women's rights and equality for all. We were formed because we've seen a rising and systematic attacks on women's rights in the last years through anti-abortion legislation, cutting of social services, and rising misogyny, especially from the right wing. We're deeply inspired by the militant traditions of the women who came before us. We are women from different ethnicities. We are students. We are youth. We are professionals. You know, we are migrants. We are immigrants. We are queer. And we are trans. As of now, we have more than 10 chapters all over the U.S. So just to give a quick overview of our program, we'll be holding a short program here in Washington Square Park, and then we'll be marching to the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, and then we'll be going to Stonewall, and then to a precinct, and then back here at Washington Square Park. So with that said, we'd like to invite our sister Angie to the front to bless us with her poetry. So for those of you who don't know, Angie is a Colombian born and New York raised undocumented immigrant, poet, and core member of the New York State Youth Leadership Council. The first, the first undocumented youth led and membership led organization in the country. She's also started the first undocumented youth advice column called Ask Angie. So please welcome Angie. Hello everyone, how are we feeling today? Good, good. I want to share this poem with all of you. Um, it's titled, um, A Tough World to Be a Woman In. Can everybody hear me? Yes? Okay, awesome, here we go. It is a tough world to be a woman in. One must wear enough makeup so the blemishes and dark circles don't show, but not too much that you look like a crayon box exploded on your face. One must show off some skin in cute little skirts and shorts, but not too much because you're labeled a slut. Who cares if you are finally secure about your body? It ain't for you to look or touch anyway. One must speak when spoken to, not when one wants to speak and always Always keep your head down. One must be in the mood, but not too much in the mood because you might be having too much of it, you know? Preferably, you're not having any of it at all into marriage, so just be like a sensual angel. One must have a magazine-style body, Angelina Jolie lips, Pam Anderson boobs, cute little feet like Barbie, and long Sofia Vergara hair that isn't curly. But damn, where is the real me underneath all this Photoshop pixelated beauty standards. One must only read Cosmopolitan and beauty secrets, please him secrets, cook for him secrets, cleaning secrets, shopping secrets, all found at wherethehellismypleasure.com. One must be smart and articulate, but not too smart, independent, but not a feminist, just enough that you're dependent on him, but not clingy. One must have a small frame, small enough where you have no space left to hide feelings, dreams, or fantasies. One must be lean, but not Schwarzenegger buff, and strong enough to bear children, unless you are a woman of color. Your children are for the welfare system, or they are anchor babies anyway. And in between all these rules and regulations and social constructions, you're expected to smile and always be happy, always be welcoming. It's a dangerous world to be a woman in. Today, our bodies are on display for the world to see. Eyes wide open, they stare into our uteruses because our eyes aren't enough. Eyes wide open, they stare into our vaginas because our eyes aren't at their same level. They think we are below them, beneath them, lying down, bent over, underneath them, eyes not at the same level. Today, our bodies are televised, reported news pieces, misrepresented half stories about what the real problem is. A rape about a girl in India, about a rape in New York, late night on the bus, in the park, in the elevator, all alone. They say she was dressed provocatively. They say she let him inside, then changed her mind. They say the two were married. They say he was her neighbor. They say she was a prostitute. They say she didn't defend herself. They say she was intoxicated anyway. But I say, 
stop justifying the damage. Stop explaining the situation. Stop victimizing the rapist. Stop silencing her story. Stop speaking on her behalf. But I say, fuck you for not supporting her, for blaming her clothing. For blaming her clothing, her makeup, her body shape, her job, her party habits. I say, you are an idiot for thinking masculinity is found in between my legs. For thinking that by force you will find a reason for existing. There you will find power and life flowing out of me like a raging waterfall that I give birth to. And it is only for me. Like a fire burning through me, I am stronger than you will ever be. Today, our bodies are laid on paper, lined in ink with laws and prohibitions, regulations on when I can have sex, with whom I can have sex, what I can use during sex, what my options are after sex. Like, damn, there are people being killed, deported, tortured, stopped and frisked and oppressed, but you worry about who is leaking my kingdom? When the hell did my body become the center of all this unwanted attention? Thank you. Whatever we wear, wherever we go, that means yes and no means no. Whatever we wear, wherever we go, that means yes and no means no. Whatever we wear, wherever we go, yes means yes and no means no. grandmother was a slave. When supposedly free of being a slave, my great-grandmother was a domestic working for slave wages. My aunt was beaten and raped and then murdered. She was my age when she died. My other aunt lost her job and her benefits working at United Airlines. The company said, you've been working here for decades. We have stolen your labor, and now we're leaving you with nothing. My mother, a doctor, was told she would not make it as a professional because women are quote-unquote too stupid and that we do not know science. And I, I personally, have been a victim of rape, like my aunt, like my ancestors. And my labor has been stolen, like all of us in this system. And I have been told I was too stupid for school, like my mother and many, many other women. And I and my family and the women in my family, we are not alone. All over, all over the world, we women have these stories of oppression. As women, we experience violence not only on a personal level, sometimes by those we trust, by those we've let into our lives, but we also experience violence at the hands of police and employers. Our labor is exploited. We are paid, we are paid less than men, and in some cases paid so little we cannot feed ourselves and our children. You cannot tell me that is not violence. And if you are a woman and you are stopped and frisked, you do not, the police do not have to honor any request for a female to search you. A male officer can search a female, even if that woman says no, even if that woman says, I do not want to be touched by a man, even if that woman is a survivor of rape, a male police officer can search you, and it is okay, they can do what they want, because they are a cop. But today, today we fight back. Today we speak truth to power. We are here to say, stop the violence. Stop the violence of the cops against women. Stop the violence in our streets. Stop the violence in our homes. Stop the violence of this system, this capitalist system that enslaves women. 
We are here to say stop gendered, emotional, and psychological violence and to free women. Free us to be able to determine our own futures, to do what we want to do with our own bodies and our own sexuality. Free us from white supremacy and male supremacy and heteronormativity and capitalism. We know that the real change only comes through the struggle of the people in the streets. Join us in building a powerful movement to defend our rights. Join WORD, Women Organized to Resist and Defend, so we can work together on demonstrations like this in the future. Make sure you don't leave today without putting your contact information down. Get a leaflet for our forum. Get a leaflet for our upcoming meeting. Join us for further discussions and build this movement. Together, we can end sexual violence and defend women's rights. The status quo must go. All right, now I would like to introduce Reverend Claudia de la Cruz, the founder and general coordinator of the Urban Butterflies, a membership-based young women's organization mainly based in West Harlem and Washington Heights Inwood. How's everybody doing? I want to start this off with a chant. Women's rights are under attack. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? That sounds good. I'm here before you in the spirit of Minerva, Patria, Maria Teresa Mirabal, in the spirit of Celia Sanchez, in the spirit of women who have died, who have offered their lives for the liberation of their countries, of their families, of their people. Look at the person right next to you. And you will find that there is a connection, hopefully, now, we need to understand that there is a connection that is overseas with women who are fighting imperialism, with women who are fighting capitalism. We cannot speak, I think, we cannot speak about women's rights without speaking about anti-imperialism. We cannot speak about women's rights without speaking about anti capitalism because it is these systems of oppression that have women both in the United States and outside of the United States fighting for their lives fighting for their livelihoods that's serious shit that is some serious shit in case we didn't know that and so when we talk about women's rights and the fight against violence against women, we cannot deny the conversation around political violence because it is political violence that has assassinated women in struggle. I like to remember, particularly as a woman from the Dominican Republic, the story of the Mirabal sisters who fought against the dictatorship, who were brutalized, tortured, Women like them who were raped in prison. That is part of the violence against women. But we seem to forget that sometimes here, when the only discourse is around violence against women and domestic violence. We need to make connections. Because one thing is not disconnected from the other. We have systems of oppression that are patriarchal based. That are based on patriarchy. And it is that patriarchy that male supremacy that allows for abuse against women, for violence against women, for rape of our women to be justified. I have the crazy idea that we should be boycotting CNN, that we should be boycotting Fox 5, that we should be boycotting all those media outlets that continue to justify violence against women and also violence against nations outside of the United States. I stand here 
here in the spirit of my Venezuelan comrades today. The women who have been at the center of the Bolivarian revolution. The women who have stood up and have been participating in creating laws and systems that could move on with a revolution that is socialist and feminist. I am with those women. I am with the women in Cuba who represent a great number of the leadership. And if we cannot acknowledge that, if we cannot acknowledge those struggles as struggles that are human struggles in the context of human rights, then we might as well be playing ourselves. Because if we don't make the connections, this movement to end the violence against women won't move forward. Will we let that happen? No. Will we let that happen? No. Will we let that happen? No. Say it like you mean it. Will we let that happen? No. Women's rights are under attack. What do we do? solidarity that cross the oceans. Let us unify our voices. This is a human rights struggle. Men and women. This is not about women's issues. It's about human rights. And if we can't defend that, then we might as well not be alive. Peace, y'all. Thank you, Reverend Claudia de la Cruz. Okay, so please welcome Sasha Ahuja. A director of government relations at Planned Parenthood in New York City. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, buenos dias, assalamu alaikum, all my people out there. Thank you so much. Big ups to Word, big ups to National Latina Institute, big ups to Damayan, so many organizations that are out here doing their thing. Thank you for being here. And just like the sister before me, I'm going to start us off with a chant. You ready? I say, you ready? Repeat after me. Women and sisters are on the rise. Women and sisters are on the rise. People better recognize. People better recognize. Women and sisters are on the rise. Women and sisters are on the rise. People better recognize. People better recognize. That's what's up. So again, my name is Sasha. I represent Planned Parenthood, but also I represent the struggles of all of you because I am you and you are me. And without our collective struggles, we are nobody. Today, you all know all too well the extremely egregious attacks on women's reproductive health that has happened across the country. Just this week in Arkansas, we saw one of the most egregious attacks on reproductive health, where women are banned from having an abortion beyond 12 weeks. This is, this is happening in every state across the country, even here in New York State, where the attacks on women's health continue to ride and we continue to, to go un we continue to not check these people who are uh, creating these laws against women in our communities. But in New York City and all over the country, we know that this is not just about abortion rights. This is not just about access to birth control. This is about getting a paid sick day so you can stay home and care for yourself or care for your children. This is about making sure you have child care so that the people that you care for in your home, are the young people that you care for, are taken care of every single day. And that is not an economic burden on you or your family. This is about cisgendered women like myself working in partnership with trans women who are out there, who are walking about, doing, living their lives, and police officers profile them as sex workers if they are carrying condoms in their pocket. This is about collective struggle. So with you, I celebrate International Women's Day. I acknowledge that I am you and you are me. And we need to continue to fight for not only reproductive health, for not only access to paid sick days, for not only making sure that all people can access what they need when they need it without any barriers from our government. We need to continue to fight together for this struggle. I thank, again, all the women who come out today and continue to fight in partnership with one another. Let's chant one more time. Women and sisters are on the rise. Women and sisters are on the rise. People better recognize. People better recognize. Women and sisters are on the rise. Women and sisters are on the rise. People better recognize. People better recognize. Thank you. 
right, so we've heard Angie earlier, and then we heard uh, Reverend Claudia de la Cruz talk about the need for international solid solidarity. We heard Sasha um, talk about you know the situation of women here in the U.S. And earlier we also heard Christine talk about word. And now we'd like to introduce Charina Nadura, the spokesperson for Ugnaya na mga anak ng bayan or linking the children of the motherland to talk about the situation of Filipino immigrant youth in the U.S. Hello, everybody! How are you? I can't hear you! One more time! Happy International Working Women's Day, everyone! Today, I'm here in front of you to speak as a Filipina and an Im immigrant and a young mother and a student. Sisters, brothers, Today, Ugnaya ng mga anak ng bayan, linking the children of the motherland, joins you in a militant solidarity to celebrate International Working Women's Day. I am Shireen Nadura, and today I rise up. I rise up with you to hold high the women's red flag of genuine liberation, free from all form of violence and oppression. I rise up as a proud Filipina whose ancestors have walked the revolutionary path of Gabriela Silang, who led 2,000 troops against Spanish colonizers, of Lorena Barros, who founded an underground women's organization to defeat U.S. imperialism, and of Nelyosa Hilao, who took the streets to topple the U.S. backed Marcos dictator in the Philippines. With the vision and strength of our foremothers, I rise up with you today for a working class community here in the belly of the beast. I rise up as an immigrant. I rise up as a daughter of the domestic worker. I rise up as a student. I rise up as a young mother. I rise up to give voice to the most marginalized of us, women who are surviving in the trenches of U.S. imperialism. The battlefield we are thrown in the era of U.S. imperialism is brutal for us young women of color. Over 11 million of our Filipino people, majority who are women, have been forced to migrate and traffic into over 200 countries. Unemployment and poverty drive our most educated young graduates out of the Philippines to serve as cheap laborers in countries like the U.S. As young, new immigrants, we contend with the rising cost of tuition while working service sector jobs that provide below living wages. Our undocumented youth are criminalized for daring to fight for equal opportunities. Our young queer LGBT youth to struggle to be respected as a whole in this community. And as a women, we bear the most, we bear most of the unpaid, invisible labor for caring of our families and organizing our communities. We endure, we endure violence and dehumanization in the form of government policies, police brutality, cultural isolation, and the false premises of hope and change that a capitalist patriarchal system will never fulfill. But today, we draw the line. We write a different her story. In honor of International Working Women's Day, we recommit to ending the system of violence against our bodies, our communities, our sovereign nations, and our people. Ugnayan rises, marches, and rallies with you and our sisters and brothers around the world to forge a new day of womankind. Long live women's solidarity and long live the women's struggle for full liberation. The women united will never be defeated. The women united will never be defeated. The women united will never be defeated. All right, so we're, um, we're, we've uh, reached the end of our program, at least just here for Washington Square Park. So we're going to start um, doing our formation. Um, maybe Karina can help me. So we're going to follow the lead banner, which is the word banner that's being set up right there. Um, and then we're going to progress that way towards the shirt waist, triangle shirt waist set. All right, so if we can just please start um, lighting up behind that banner. Human rights are under attack. What do we do? Stand up, my God! Our women's rights are under attack. 
under attack. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. 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 Stand up, fight back. If you want me to go to the middle, I can mic check from there when you mic check from here. Alright, go to the middle. Okay, so you gotta hold it up higher too so people can do a mic check.
see we have a lot of people who want to know who we are. I see we have a lot of people who want to know who we are. So we're going to start off with a chant. So we're going to start off with a chant. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. People want to know. People want to know.
No justice, no peace. No sickness, police. No justice, no peace. Look. And real men 
challenging this, only by challenging this, we can achieve, we true, can achieve true gender equality. True gender equality. So now we would like to introduce. So now we would like to introduce Shein, Shein from African American lesbians. From African American lesbians. United for societal change. United for societal change. of a child because the truth is I hadn't connected to my woman for a while. This is what she had to say. Listen up sister to these words of truth. The best way to be a woman is to stay true to you. Now we haven't spoken in some time and I see you've been trying to figure things out. Sister let me be the first to tell you that there's no formula to being a woman. That's not what life's about. See you want things to be black and white. Simple as one, two, three. But that's not living. I'll tell you what it is to be a woman, at least what it's like for me. And remember, it's still my truth whether or not you agree. To be a woman is to be exactly who I am authentically. It means that I love who I choose. I speak my truth and I am the best me I can be. I'm not afraid to fall. I make choices and set healthy boundaries. I freely share, give, and receive uplifting energy. I listen to my intuition. I'm not conceived that convinced that I'm an object because of society. I wear what makes me comfortable. I let my breath flow freely. I love my other sisters and I love my partner openly. I let no man convince me to apologize for being me. I trust my higher power. Well, really I call her God. And every choice I make, I try to act in love. You see, to be a woman has nothing to do with my age. I am a woman because I love my I am a woman because I carry my life in my womb. But more importantly, I am a woman because I choose love in all I do. I hope you understand that being a woman is not a destination. It's a state of living and being. And just by being you, you provide the world more meaning. Now, sister, I'm glad you took a moment to listen to the mirror and check in with your reflection. And I'm so happy, too, this is what is reflecting. I love you and check in with me anytime. And may I just say your woman is so sublime. And then I smiled at my woman, reflecting back to me so clear. I was grateful to be the woman in the mirror. I'm going to leave you guys with a chant. Okay. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. Black, white, all unite for women's rights. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. Gay, straight, black, white, all unite for women's rights. All right. 
Latino regime. Latino regime does nothing. Does nothing. But surrender to. But, but surrender to. Imperialist interests. Imperialist interests. And multinational corporations. And multinational corporations. At the expense. At the expense of the rights. Of the rights and livelihood and livelihood of the Filipino people of the Filipino people worsening poverty worsening poverty has forced the migration has forced the migration of Filipinas of Filipinas to work overseas to work overseas who often find themselves who often find themselves working jobs working jobs where they are where they are vulnerable to vulnerable to violence and exploitation violence and exploitation 70 percent 70 percent of the 4500 filipinos of the 4500 filipinos who leave the country daily who leave the country daily to find work abroad to find work abroad are women are women U.S. imperialist policies. U.S. imperialist policies have forced migrants. Have forced migrants out of their own countries. Out of their own countries who have contributed greatly. Who have contributed greatly to the U.S. economy. To the U.S. economy, but are still treated. But are still treated as criminals and as less than human. As criminals and as less than human. Fire Gabriella USA! Fire Gabriella USA! Calls on Filipinas and allies everywhere! Calls on Filipinas and allies everywhere! To join the struggle! To join the struggle! To stop the economic violence! To stop the economic violence! Against Filipino women and children! Against Filipino women and children! Perpetuated by U.S. imperialism! Perpetuated by U.S. imperialism! We must be steadfast! We must be steadfast! In demanding justice, in demanding justice for all victims, for all victims of state-sponsored violence, of state-sponsored violence, and resist U.S. military intervention, and resist U.S. military intervention, and puppet government, and puppet governments like the Philippine Aquino administration, like the Philippine Aquino administration. Stop the imperialist exploitation. Stop the imperialist exploitation and oppression of women and children. And oppression of women and children. And no to U.S. military occupation. And no to U.S. military occupation over our land and our bodies. Over our land and our bodies. Zulu, Gabriela, Luna, Manaki, Baka. The women united will never be defeated. The women united will never be defeated.
Congratulations. Second class citizen. So since kindergarten, our kids have to 
learn that they did not come second. They came first. This is science. This is not uh, something from heaven that just came into my brain. It's science. We have to start science in, in kindergarten. Otherwise, the males that act properly, that's because we raise them properly. If we raise them properly, if we raise them as bullies, they will act as bullies. So we have to start teaching our kids. So in Haiti, with what happened with the earthquake, we've had a lot of rape. Women were raped because some of the young men were, raped, were not raised properly. The one who were raised properly did not do it. It's not a, an epidemic that every male in Haiti is raping. But enough is do, uh, uh, males are doing it to make it bad. So I can see that all of us here, we have the same struggle, the same fight, wherever we are. Because when one of us is attacked, like the woman in India, it attacks all of us, women and men who have a conscience. So we have to stick together, men and women, to change the situation. Because like racism, which I call organic stupidity syndrome, wow. and, there's, <laughs> and there's no medication for that one. Misogyny is another organic stupidity syndrome, and there's less medication for that one. So the males have to be well educated so that women can drive. So we, as women, we know that we have the power, we know. But every time we turn the TV, we uh, look at magazines, they make us think that our temple, without the brain, is the most important thing in a woman. No, it's in here, our brain, it works. So we have to remember that and keep on thriving and keep on rising, like my, my Maya Angelou said. So I thank you very much for sharing this, uh, for listening to me, and we will struggle together. When women try to stand under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! When queer rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Ahead of us. And if we don't organize a real movement in this country, 
agree. We're not going to be able to carry out that task. So keep moving forward. Keep on bringing in more young people. Let them learn about the history of resistance. That's what you don't learn. And that's what you don't they don't want you to know of all the times you've been victorious. They don't want to know about the great feats that you have accomplished. So the result of the struggle over the triangle, women organized to get some of the things that you have now in terms of health and safety. The reason why there are no shackles on my ankles now is because of Harriet Tubman. The reason why nobody can tell me where I can sit on a bus is because of the movement in Alabama throughout the South. So we must build a movement that is effective, not one where you just talk. Not one where you just say, okay, I have this rally, let me have it next week. No, down the day and organizing. Rally the people to take on and lead their own movement. Thank you. Who benefits from having undocumented 
immigration status. And that is why, as women's rights activists, we cannot stop at abortion rights. We cannot stop at equal pay for equal work. We have to keep fighting until there are full rights for all immigrants. Until there are jobs instead of jails. Until the U.S. military stops killing innocent people in the name of fighting terrorism. Because at the bottom line, to achieve women's liberation, we need to defeat capitalism. For all of you who came out here today, you've already started this fight. Because also on the other hand, we cannot fight capitalism unless we are fighting women's oppression. But I encourage you, don't stop here. Don't let the ruling class divide and compartmentalize our struggles. Women's rights are immigrant rights. Women's rights are workers' rights. The groups are not separate. So let's make the connection and keep up the fight. I know a chant, but I'm not sure if it's in Bangladeshi. 
proclamation morphed into a modern day Jim Crow. I see it and I know history of ownership still imposed. Plantations, reservations, mass incarceration still raging wars. Freedom destined only for a few. I know who you are, scarred by liberated vaginas, witch hunts and witch burns, bruja powers threatening so I take my own right to vote. For a vagina suffrage, I call. I vote for this vagina to fuck, sing, and choose. It is my destiny to decide who and how and how many times I fuck and when a baby comes into this world. Who are you to dictate the nature of this womb? My womb is ancient and wise. It carries the legacy of my abuelas. Guerreras dancing on the earth, brewing potions, remedios, and spells, birthing in a squat, feeding, feeding with their breasts. I love and cherish life, just like I love and cherish my ability and instinctual power to trust and know. I trust and know when it's time, when to birth, when not to birth, if to birth many babies or birth one or none. I choose not to birth more brown babies to fill up your prisons and wage your wars, just like I choose to birth the next generation of brown revolutionaries. Woo! Yes, Woo! I choose. This is my voice singing over arrogant manifest destiny. Know that you do not fool me. I ask, where were you when my back was cracked, when my womb was sliced and tossed, when my lands were bled and split into money-making plots, where were you? Where were you speaking about precious life when my daughter was sold, when my son came back wrapped in a dead, striped and starred flag? Where were you when my tia drowned at the border crossing? Where were you? Where are you when we scream for the right to a life with dignity and justice? There's nothing to own or impose in this body. I claim it so that you won't dissect it, experiment with it, track, kill, or claim it. I claim this body and choose life in all forms, ways, and spaces. I claim this spiraling and expansive life force that lives burning like the glowing ancient sun right here inside my womb, my power, my center, my courage my creative life force. Today I choose to speak in honor of the brave choices of the seven generations behind me and the seven generations ahead. Today I choose. Today we choose. All right, so we've come to the end of our march. So we'd like to thank everyone, every single individual, every single organization that came out today. It's been an amazing day. It's been, you know, uh, you know, the weather is great. And, um, but this is just the beginning, you know, of our connections, our collaborations. So we would like to ask, you know, individuals who are interested uh, to join Word to please join us and then see exhibit one.
So please sign up that uh, form, you know, so we can get your um, contact information. But if you're part of an organization, then we would love to work with you again. You know, we hope this is the beginning of new connections, you know, and um, the continuation, you know, of a militant women's movement. Not just here in New York, but here in the U.S. So we'd like to do a closing chant. Does anyone want to lead a closing chant since, you know, I've been talking for three hours? All right, so we'll, we'll start, uh, hold on, we'll start with, uh, uh, hold on, I forgot this, um, so if you're free, I hope that you can come on Friday, March 22nd, 7 p.m. at uh, 2295 Adam Clayton Powell, we're showing, we're having a forum um, about the Black Liberation Movement, and if you think, you know, there are other topics that the word, you know, organization should handle, please come and approach us. You know, because we're um, all inclusive. So, um, to end this rally, I'd like to um, do a chat in my own um, native language and then we'll translate in English and Spanish. There's been women, uh, there's been a struggle of women in Bangladesh yes, for yes. how long? Um, it's been like about like um, so many years, like, but these days, now a couple months is getting very old, and we don't want this situation anymore. We want that our government should look at it and just do something better, but not like killing people for no reason, for no, we don't want that. How many women have been uh, hurt and or, or killed? Um, it's like uh, 33 women, around 33 women have been killed, and plus it's like more than 200 people, uh, male and female, have been killed for no reason. They are just normal people in Bangladesh, and the government, they're just watching it, they don't take any action for it. They're just doing it for their own purpose. The, I don't think the government doing the right thing for this situation. I think government should look at it and she should be more concerned about it, what, what's going on with the present situation. So I believe this is kind of like fault of Bangladeshi government. And we really don't want her anymore to be our president. Uh, and so, who is that? Um, Sheikh Hasina. Her name is Sheikh Hasina. We don't want her anymore to be our president of Bangladesh. She doesn't have any rights. Uh, she is the Prime Minister of uh, Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina. So there has been a women's movement in Bangladesh, and what what are the demands of uh, the women? They want to save their religion. They're just uh, fighting for religion. They just uh, they're just following. They don't they don't do any politics or anything bad, which yes, is gonna I be harm. They're just fighting like for saving the people who talks. Who's a scholar of Muslim? And 90% people in Bangladesh, they are um, Islam, like they're they're Muslim. So, uh, like for no reason, some people have been arrested. All the male and female are just like um, they're just like 
fighting for them, to saving those people who are being arrested. So the government doesn't like it. So the government is just, just unfair judgment for that. And what, what, is, uh, what is the government doing on a day-to-day -day basis against the religion of these women? I don't think she likes Islam anymore. If she likes it, she should be more, uh, like, she is even Muslim by name, but she is not a practiced Muslim. I don't think so. If she is a Muslim, she shouldn't be like with that narrower person in her mind. And like she's putting people in danger for no reason. So we don't support this president anymore. And your organization has been trying to talk to, to the prime minister and, and try to stop these, uh, these violence? Yes, like um, um, all the people, like uh, whoever wants to make it, um, make it good, or whoever wants to fight, um, behind, like before the just whatever going on the situation, the, the the police is getting crazy. They just like arrested people for no reason, and all the people like uh, normal people they can't even walk to the street because of scare of police. And the, and the police is killing the people for no reason. You, and have, you have tried to talk to the prime minister or to, we to the tried, government? We tried, but she doesn't let us to talk. She doesn't let us to listen. Our boys, she's just being hiding from us. And she's just telling all the all the uh, bad, narrow, like what? She is not the right thing. She doesn't want to give us like chance to say her something. She, so we don't just want it. Her so anymore. you just want religious freedom? Yes, we just <laughs> want <laughs> freedom. <laughs> and we, we, we want to like uh, to save our religion. We wanted the people who's in arrested that Muslim scholar. They are uh, they are not the um, um, war crime people. They it's just misunderstanding for them. So we want to save those people who is scholar of Muslim, whatever um, whoever been arrested right now. And who are they? Uh, uh, Sa um, Saidi. One person is Saidi. One is Kader Mola. One, one is. Ghulam Azam, one is Nizami, one is Muzahid, and we wanna um, we wanna free all of them. They are not the Rajagar. So, they are women. They, they are all male. Mm -hmm. Not women. They are some uh, all men. And um, so it's like. But you know, they, they are, they are innocent, all about. They are innocent. They don't do something like you know uh, something bad for war crime. It just make up story for the government to just putting them in the. Um, jail for no reason. The government doesn't like Islam anymore. Even though the country is 90 per, uh, 90 percent Muslim in there, and it's like mean Islamic country, but she just been different. She well, why? Why does she? Why do they not like w Islam anymore? She, I have no idea. She doesn't give us any enough speeches about it. She doesn't give us any clue what's wrong with her. That's her planning. She did. She did something uh, like with her plan. It's not something actually. I don't think. If she think about it, something the like Islamic this, um, close uh, she wants to close the Islamic, all the Islamic organization in Bangladesh, and I don't think this is right because where all the people are Muslim, mostly like 95 person, 90 person. So this is something I don't. She's not like thinking about it. She's just like thinking about something weird, which is not belongs with our uh, constitution. I hope uh, this is not belongs with it. So this is just injustice. She's doing just something just in un, 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 unfair stuff with the normal people. Thank you. Would you like to add something? No, thank you. Thank, thank you very you much. Very Appreciate. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Where are you from? The news? Yes, WBI radio. WBI radio. Yeah.